Welcome, my friend. It's good to see you. Please take a seat, grab a drink, and let me tell you the tale of the Glosen, the Swedish ghost pig. In the frigid heart of winter, enveloped by the icy grasp of Sweden's chilling winds, the new year looms on the horizon. Standing amidst the snow-covered terrain, a thick blanket of white obscuring all but the eerie silence that permeates the air, you find yourself shivering, seeking solace within the confines of your tightly wrapped jacket. Yet, in this desolate expanse, a disturbance unsettles the tranquillity. A faint sound reaches your ears, barely discernible against the backdrop of nature's wintry symphony. You pivot, an instinctive reaction, and there, emerging from the shadows, a figure advances towards you. As your gaze fixates upon the approaching enigma, a pair of crimson eyes pierce the darkness, their luminescence an ethereal spectacle. The silhouette materialises, its form akin to that of a grand hound, or perchance a formidable boar. Before your bewildered eyes, a colossal pig materialises, possessing eyes ablaze with infernal flames, a visage of spectral terror. Its alabaster hide contrasts sharply against the ebony void, while a spine, sharp and serrated, akin to a whirling saw blade, adorns its formidable frame. It charges directly towards you, its trajectory aligned with your very being. It quickly runs between your legs, cleaves you asunder with its jagged back, splitting you in twain. Such is the encounter with a peculiar phantasmal swine, a creature known through countless tales that echo predominantly in the lore of southern Sweden. This supernatural entity, known as Glosen, amongst other names, captivates our attention. The name Glosen, the most prevalent appellation, likely derives from the verb at glow, signifying to stare or to shine, coupled with sugger, a sow. In this brief discourse we shall delve deeper into the enchanting lore of this spectre in swine form. Why pigs, you may wonder. Pigs, entwined in a complex and protracted association with humanity, have evolved not only as a species, but also as a potent symbol. Even domesticated swine once roamed the untamed expanses of the countryside, often displaying aggression and peril, particularly when protecting their offspring. Wild boars, a far more menacing and fearsome variant, pose an even greater risk. Even in contemporary times, people cautiously avoid encounters with these untamed creatures, with occasional reports surfacing of injuries inflicted upon unsuspecting individuals. Within the Swedish folklore archives, myriad accounts abound chronicling diverse manifestations of supernatural pigs. Not all of these porcine entities align precisely with the nature of Glosen. Other spectral beings, assuming the guise of swine, emerge from the tapestry of tales, including the vengeful spirit of a slain child haunting the living, often known as Gravso or Grave Sow, or the inaugural sacrificial offering during the construction of a new church, referred to as Kirkogrim or Church Grim, occasionally assuming the form of a pig. However, our focus today centres on Glosen. This ethereal being frequently accompanies a rite known as Orshkong, or Year Walk, a perilous divination ritual observed during Christmas or New Year, though occasionally linked to other seasons such as Midsummer. Let us embark upon this exploration, seeking an appropriate starting point, a decision fraught with uncertainty when it comes to folklore. Should we set aside theories associating Glusen with various boars and pigs of Old Norse mythology, such as the boar Gullimbursti, sacred to the god Freya, or pre-Christian fertility rituals? We may find a promising juncture in the curious writings of Petter Ludbeck, Published between 1697 and 1700, his work entitled Antiquities from Smallland contains a chapter dedicated to the year walk ritual, a custom he believed to be of ancient origin. 
Rudebeck recounts a ritual and its culmination, a fateful encounter with an elderly equestrian figure. This supernatural entity, akin to the old Norse deity Odin, appears once every seven years to those who undertake the year walk annually. Enveloped in an aura of otherworldly radiance, astride a horse wreathed in flames, the old man wields a staff adorned with runic carvings clutched between his teeth. I believe that this enigmatic figure, resonating with echoes of ancient lore, fulfills a role akin to subsequent depictions of Glosen. In later accounts, it is this being who brandishes the rune-laden staff, comparably challenging the year walker. As with any tapestry of folklore, the details, explanations and variations are subject to fluctuation. While descriptions of the year walk ritual exist from the 17th and 18th centuries, it is in the 19th century that we discover the most vivid portrayals of Glusen, irrefutably linking it to the spectre of a ghostly swine. Accounts of Glusen's visage are often adorned with macabre motifs, with one recollection declaring, Glusen was ghastly, its corporeal form bedecked with a hundred eyes, their vile fires gleaming. Typically, Glosen manifests as a repugnant sow, its back assuming the shape of a razor-sharp saw, accompanied at times by a retinue of piglets. Legends frequently depict Glosen hurtling towards a year walker at an alarming pace, endeavouring to pass between their legs and sunder them with its serrated spine. Yet some chronicles contend that Glosen possesses the ability to transport the year walker upon its back, embarking on an odyssey that spans anywhere from seven weeks to three years, ultimately leaving the rider bewildered, deranged, or even succumbing to exhaustion. In certain amalgamated tales, the rider, born upon Glosen's back, falls victim to the murderous lacerations inflicted by the swine's serrated back. A mere brush with Glosen's presence may also be calamitous, for even a fleeting touch can herald doom. One account recounts a maiden's encounter, as she beheld Glusen's colossal form charging past, narrowly evading its path, merely grazing the hem of her dress. Yet this mere brush proved disastrous, as she fell gravely ill shortly thereafter. A more substantial contact with Glusen, or a greater portion of her garments, would have sealed her fate, as any interaction with Glusen portends certain death. Fortuitously, various means of protection have been documented, such as crossing one's legs, a gesture reminiscent of the Holy Cross, offering glows and specially prepared objects like seven-year-old nuts endowed with magical properties, ensnaring her within a fishing net, or wielding knowledge of the dark arts. In modern times, Comprehending the allure and necessity of an enigmatic and peculiar rite such as the year walk may prove challenging. This is largely attributed to the rapid urbanisation and the ensuing shifts in world view. Village communities have disbanded, replaced by sprawling rural centres, rendering contemporary individuals unable to fathom the extent to which preceding generations were tethered to communal traditions permeating all aspects of life. These individuals possessed a distinct perception of existence and lived in perpetual fear of the supernatural, a world rife with unpredictable occurrences, often attributed to unseen forces, capricious influences, fortune and the like. Glosen stood as one of these perilous and unpredictable elements. Caution befalls those who venture outdoors on frigid winter nights, for one never truly knows what lurks in the encroaching darkness. And so ends my story of the Glosen. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining, and if you did, please subscribe, like, and maybe leave a comment down below. Thank you for your company, my friend. I hope to sit with you again very soon.